Welcome back guys, part three of my 355 engine out series. Uh, sorry to mess up the shot. It's actually really awesome when the motor that comes in your car is almost as pretty as the car. I actually find this fascinating. I could literally stare at this for an hour. It is just gorgeous the way they designed it. I love to see how it works. I love how the throttle bodies are linked. It's just, it is, is a wonderful piece of engineering. Anyway, so in this video, we're gonna be doing a full inspection to find out what uh, is the status of our boat or what needs to be replaced in this because remember this is a major service So for anybody new or doesn't not familiar with the 355 the major service is most literally just doing the belts So that that's all you have to do on this. However You already worked so hard to get the motor out Now's the time to show your motor that you love it and do everything else that needs to be done So for example last time did the water pump i did the uh like all the gaskets i did the motor mounts and stuff like that stuff that make is either impossible or very hard to do when the motor's in there and uh it's so much easier to do it now so that's why everybody does everything when the motor's out and maybe that's why sometimes the bills are a little bit more is because instead of spreading it out over a whole time you're doing it all at once so anyway a word of warning when the 355 has its engine out it becomes very very nose heavy so when you do this service, don't put anything in the front trunk because that might off balance it. And two, just don't lift up on the back. You literally, I don't know, maybe 100 pounds, 50 pounds of force on the tail, you can actually lift it up. And that becomes very scary that you could literally drop your 355 on its nose. A lot of people either strap it to the lift or they'll put weights at the back so it that doesn't happen. So anyway, guys, let's go ahead and get into this motor. I'm gonna show you around and we'll start uh, inspecting it. First thing I like to do is remember how we took the uh, engine harness out. So I don't want this to get any fluid, water, oil, or damage into it in any way. So what I like to do, maybe put it in a nice uh, micro cloth, so it doesn't get bumped around too much. And then we're gonna take that whole thing and just put it in a plastic bag. Uh, so next thing we want to do to get access to the belts, I'm going to zoom you guys in here real quick. We're going to go ahead and finish taking off some of these hoses. It's time to diswatch. Okay, we're going to go ahead and break this free. There might be a little coolant in there, so just watch out. All right, so we're going to do this 10 millimeter nut right here, and that's going to allow us to uh, free the timing covers. Kind of set it up here on top. All right, so you can see the next thing in the way of getting to our covers is the belt. So before you take these belts off, it's a good idea to check the tension because the, the, the tension doesn't set automatically like it is on most cars with a spring-loaded tensioner. You have to kind of manually set it. Now, Ferrari sells a harmonic belt, accessory belt tensioner that literally costs like 2,500 bucks. So nobody's gonna buy that. So the way, even most shops probably don't have that. So what I do is I just check the tension of the belts with just a, ch uh, a belt tensioner checker. And then what I'll do is I'll just simply write down the values. So when we put the new belts on, we just match the values. And if it worked from how it was set up before, it's gonna continue to work now. So to remove the main alternator water pump bolt, we're just gonna take a 19 millimeter. And actually if you tighten the nut at the bottom, that is what pulls this down to loosen the belt. Then once it's loose enough, you can usually just pop it off the water pump and set it aside to be replaced. For the AC compressor, of course, Ferrari couldn't use a conventional tightening mechanism. So they have this complex uh, mix of Allen 17s and 8 millimeters to be able to get it off. Loosen these two nuts and then there's a tensioner right here that actually sets the tensioning. All right, with the tensioner loosened, you should be able to kind of just push the alternator up, to work the belt off as well. Now with the accessory belts off, it is time to take off the timing belt covers, which are just eight of these uh, five millimeter Allens. you're doing this yourself careful there's these little tiny spacers that go at the top bolts that just kind of fall out so make sure you hang on to them i believe what those spacers are for are actually like on the challenge cars they run like a guard just so little tire chunks from racetracks don't get into the belt so they put a guard on those and on the regular cars they don't have anything there so they got to put a spacer now with the covers removed we can actually take a look at everything that's going on here 
Basically, what we're looking for is what is leaking, what is worn, what is out of the ordinary, so we can address it now while the engine's out. So I would like to start up here with the front with the timing belts. We can fully see both of our systems here. And uh, even though the belts are gonna be replaced, we just wanna make sure there's no excessive worn. Was this rubbing on anything? Are there any chunks taken out of it? Because the last thing you wanna do is replace the belt just to find out that it's gonna eat up the new belt. So these belts look like they're in good condition. Uh, the way the system works is this is the tensioner and it pushes against the bearing. So if this seizes up or this collapses, it could really affect the tension on your belts, which could be catastrophic. So uh, we want to make sure there's a 2.5 millimeter gap here and there's no leaks coming from the tensioners. And uh, these look good, nice and uh, tight like they should. Uh, the bearings are pretty much, I think everybody replaces these when they do the belts. It's just cheap insurance. Even though these are the Hill Engineering already, uh, I'm going to be replacing these just to make sure that... Uh, everything is in tip-top shape uh, so I'm happy with the way the belts look so let's go on to the other items so while we're on the front uh, you can check uh, these for leaks the the gears there's seals behind here front main cover front main seal and so uh, overall I'm gonna say mine looks pretty good uh, in fact I don't really see any leaks right now motor looks really clean wall up here in front we can spin our alternator make sure it spins freely no grinding Spin the uh, tensioner pulley. Uh, your water pump, you're gonna wanna inspect it for leaks. Listen to it. So this water pump is also 2,500 miles old. If you're on the stock water pump, I highly recommend it, uh, you do it. That's probably one of the most common things that people go ahead and do here is an extra thing just because eventually a water pump will fail. But my, one of my Jeep right now is for, in fact failed. So just get it done. This one being so new and being an upgraded version of it, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this water pump on there. Moving on, so we can come up here, start looking around the valve covers. Our cam seals leaking. They look pretty good. Uh, I believe that's just a little bit of road grime. There's been no dripping going on. So we can go ahead and continue around the motor. Uh, look at all the fuel lines. Look at the fuel rails, fuel injectors, and uh, particularly anything that's rubber. For example, these hoses right here, I'd replace on the last engine out just because they just turned gooey and, and started to crack. So these are brand new hoses and they seem to be in good shape. The EGR hoses are another common failure item. So come around here. Is our uh, any of our cam sensors leaking at all? We can give that a check. Again, focus on all the rubber hoses. Is anything rubber? Because that, that's typically the thing that, that uh, fails. So on my last engine out, I went through and I did a ton of rubber. So I did the little drains for the valve covers. They got replaced. While we're up here, we can move and check our throttle. Make sure it moves freely and doesn't bind. And so these appear to be in really good shape. Uh, right here you have a heat exchanger between your gear oil and your coolant. These rubber things need to be inspected. Make sure they're in good shape. Nice soft rubber, nothing hard or cracked. So right now these seem to be in really good shape. So we come back here, we can check our Cadillac converter cores. Make sure nothing's getting eaten up there. Check your engine mounts. Like I said, my engine and transmission mounts, I did them on the last one, so these are practically brand new. Anyway, so I've already inspected this. The things that I found, just out of curiosity for any of you guys, I found a torn hose here, so we're going to address that. And then one of the other most common failures on here is the CV boot. So if you look on this side, it's getting a little deformed, but it's in good shape. But uh, this one actually failed probably on one of the last drives. I, I noticed it failed, and that's kind of why I decided just to do this now instead of the summer, just because these are a lot easier to do when the motor's out. So you got an 1800 degree header right here, right on top of 20 year old rubber. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and address that. All right, last thing before we tear into those CVs, we're actually gonna do a manifold inspection because the manifolds are a lot easier to do when they're on the car. So uh, real quick backstory. Ferrari manifolds are tend to fail because they made them out of way too thin of a, a metal, I guess. So when they get very, very, very hot, they just kind of, they totally melt apart and they'll actually look like just like, like literally they were made out of wax or something like that. So <clears throat> mine were replaced by the dealership and I can't back this up, but a lot of people on the forum agree with me that uh, the manifolds were at some point updated and they were made out of a lot better quality material and stuff like that uh, because they are several different revisions on the part number so anyway we're going to use a camera and go in there and see what we can let's see so we're just going to go right here in the back cool thing about these ferrari headers is what they call a four two one design so the four pipes go into two which go into one instead of having a four to one collector so you can see this is where the two main exhaust uh intersections come into the pipe so we'll just start by going in the top one and so when we go in the top one you see another two go in 
So this particular camera has a side view on it. I did this earlier, actually I made it all the way to the cylinder, but I don't want to spend too much time make you guys bored. So anyway, like right there, you can see that we got a nice bend, nice smooth piping everywhere. There's nothing that looks deformed or anything like that. Try to put a little bend on this so we can get in a different primary. All right, so now right there, we got a really good look at it turning towards the, uh, the exhaust valve. And it looks perfectly formed right now, so I'm actually really happy with these look. So we're gonna go ahead and poke it into the uh, passenger side and see what we see on that side. All right, so now we're going to go and do the exact same thing into the passenger side manifold. Let's see if we can get by that little lip. All right, so now we are in, um, I can't figure out which primary. I took both ups. <laughs> so either way, you can see the pipe there going towards the exhaust valve. It got stuck. I can't get in going further, but you can see that metal looks in good shape. I don't see any deformities. I don't see any holes. We'll try one or two more primaries and see what we can see. So let's back out a little bit. All right, so I believe by looking in there, I can see that it went in the different primary, but I got to get a nice twist to make it go around the corner. There it goes. It's nice. When it finally frees up and goes in, it's awesome. All right, so right there, we can see a little bit of him going around the corner. And uh, again, looks really sharp. So we'll check one of the lower ones now. So those are the two upper ones. We'll drop down into the lower one here. All right, so right about there, we get a good view of the turn. And that metal looks great to me. So I, I have no concern over these headers whatsoever. In my opinion, they are in perfect shape. So anyway, let's get started on the CVs, guys. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and do some work. We're going to be doing both CVs because obviously if one failed, that means the other one's probably right about to fail. So uh, we're going to do one at a time just in case we get confused at which way any bolts go that... Uh, we have the other side as a reference. Not that it's that hard of a job, it's mostly just labor. But anyway, so it's gonna involve uh, removing the axle from here, taking off the knuckle and the caliper, and then we can slide the whole axle out. So uh, let's do it. We're gonna go ahead and start with the caliper. So two 19 millimeter bolts on the back side. We're just gonna go ahead and take those both out. One thing I always like about Ferrari is a lot of these bolts, in fact, almost every single one, has the uh, horse on it from Ferrari. It's kind of cool. Now with the caliper off, we're just gonna find a safe place to kind of just hang it so it does not hang on the brake line. I usually just kind of like to let it zip tie out of the way there. And then to remove the rotor, we just need to undo this six millimeter and then this nut. Now we've exposed our parking brake, so there's a 36 millimeter nut. Now there's no cotter pin on this, so we just have to simply undo the bends here. So we get to use my favorite Ferrari tool, hammer. Then a 36 millimeter impact should take it right off. So now what we need to do is get the whole knuckle to be able to rotate back so we can pull the axle out. So that involves Undoing the top bolt. Also, you be very careful with your ABS wire that you don't snag it on anything. So next thing we're going to be doing is just simply removing the shock. Just note there's two thick washers on either side of the shock. Lastly, we need to undo the sway bar link, four millimeter here. Now we need to undo the bolts here at the axle flange. They are 13 millimeter 12 points, so just uh, make sure you have that tool. And uh, the easiest way I've found is just a long, long extension and get there, and then you can just spin this around. I'm going to tap the axle out, just using a piece of wood out of the uh, bearing. Now we can let it sag down as we carefully remove the axle.
Now we got our CV axle out. With the axle out of the car, it's time to start taking it apart so we can clean this up and replace this uh, ruptured boot. Again, I'm just going to use a piece of wood to pop the cap off. Out comes the cap. And we got our CV shot. Now, what I've been rating online is actually this is a the same part that's on a Porsche 911. So I guess they uh, Ferrari and Porsche decided to share the same part on the car. So um, when the boot pops, all this is contaminated now. There could be dirt in there. We don't want to wear out the CV. So we're going to uh, clean this up real good, put some new Molly Coat grease in there, and put it all back together. kind of clean this up you can actually see there is a spring loaded clip on here so we'll go and remove this i love how my wife's always like you should wear a glass so your hands don't get dirty and then like they rip whatever <laughs> my hands are going to be just as dirty with gloves on as uh without so we'll use our snap ring pliers and obviously don't try to shoot this completely across the garage i can tell you for sure what my next tool upgrade is going to be is an actual decent pair of snap ring pliers because these things are terrible i don't know where the hell i got these Finally, all right. Snap ring is off. Hands are now dirty with no gloves. Got the old torn boot off. So now let's go ahead and get all this cleaned up in the parts washer, including my hands. So much for gloves. All right, guys, so everything is cleaned up in the parts washer, so it's time to start reassembling our uh, CV. So just as a reference, um, all the balls are the exact same size, but there is some differences in the cages. So let me show you some things. If you look at the this part of it, there is a flat side. That goes towards the outside, towards the wheel. This part goes in the inside. And then even on the cage, if you look, one side is perfectly smooth. The other side actually has a taper. The taper part goes again towards the wheel so we got flat side and taper side going out and this completely uh, non-machine side and the the thick side pointing in and then as far as how you align it you'll notice that there is thick thin thick thin thick thin and then if you look on here there is thick thin thick thin and i'm talking about the distance here they alternate so the thick part is going to go to a thin part here and the thin part here is going to go to thick does that make sense yep. all right so this thing is just going to slide inside the cage again we're going to go tapered and flat side out and then we got to reinsert each one of the bearings back into the cage All right, so now we've got the bearings properly installed, so we need to grease them and put everything on. So last thing we want to do is get everything done and forget to put this on. It is kind of a little difficult to get over here, so sometimes it's easier to put this guy on the shaft first. Now the kit I bought came with these triangle-shaped uh, greaser things, so you can actually kind of insert it in there wherever you need to. Now making sure that the grease goes both uh, above and below the cage. That way it kind of fully penetrates the bearings. And then we're just going to kind of move it around to make sure everything gets everywhere. All right, so we've used our full bag. Obviously I didn't learn my lesson from last time with the glove. Go ahead and put this guy on there. Went on a lot easier. Okay, to be honest, I've been struggling with this for about 10 minutes now. It's uh, not as easy as it looks. Now we're just gonna install our two cinch clamps and uh, ready to go back onto the car. So there's one gasket that comes with the kit uh, that wasn't on there before. But when I took the axle off, I was actually surprised to see a bunch of fluid pour out. All right, guys, so the axle has been rebuilt. We put that gasket on there and uh, it's ready to go back into the car. Uh, full disclaimer, so normally I always do one side first and then I film the other side. This one actually 
did the first one on film and so it it took a little longer there's a little bit of a learning curve like you know how to get the uh the boot on was kind of a pain so now we're just going to go ahead and thread all the bolts on so next thing we're going to do is just tighten the six bolts on the flange and uh snug it up to torque the spec so now we're just going to reinstall everything put the axle back in the bearing tighten the nut this one goes to 275 newton meters and then everything else is just going to be good and tight before we do that we're just going to put everything back together so make sure that we have the a-arm back in place we're going to start this whole process with the allen next thing we're going to do is put the shock bolt through remember there was two spacers on the shock bolt these two thick washers, one on each side. So this one we're just gonna set here. We should be able to get the bolt all the way through. Now we're just gonna go ahead and slide our big Ferrari bolt through. Put our washer on, our nut, and then we're just gonna snug all this up. Okay guys, we are done with video three. I am filthy, it looks like I got stuff on my face. Anyway, CV boots are uh, replaced on the 355 and we've rebuilt the CV axles. I hope you guys learned something, enjoyed watching. So next video, stay tuned guys. The next video, we're actually gonna be doing the timing belts and showing you how that you check the timing on a 355. So it's gonna be a pretty cool video. Stay tuned guys, thanks for watching. That's good.